painting, it's all beautiful. I mean, you know, as an artist, I grew up in New York and I was away for a long time. And when I was back one time, I remember walking around thinking the things that I liked the most about the city was the cracks in the street, the way the concrete is, and you know, just all of the, I, I don't want to call it detritus, you know, all of the stuff that's kind of, so that, that was beauty. This is a painting of Kobe Bryant. When it's finished, it'll have photos glued on it, different references, stencils to his career. Very excited. I do the backgrounds first. I sketch in a figure, and then I paint the background. The background is dry. I paint the figure over the top of it in oils. Background is usually acrylic, spray paint, things like that. When the piece is new, I'm real excited about doing the background and what happens and letting the mess build up and seeing what happens with that, the creativity involved in that. When Kobe gave me a commission, and I talked with Kobe several times and so enjoyed the directness of what he saw, what he liked, what he didn't like, and it was really a lesson in focus and simplicity and clarity. background started reminding me of where I grew up, old construction sites, billboards pasted over each other. So I loved that part of it. I live in this beautiful home here in Santa Barbara. And, but this is like a boiler room in some basement in the Bronx. <laughs> I grew up in the Bronx and I loved it there. I kind of grew up in the streets. That's kind of what I remember of it as a kid, just growing up playing in the streets, fighting in the streets, just uh, taking care of my little brother in the streets, keeping him out of trouble. My dad was a street guy, he was a tough guy, and so was his brother. So I grew up thinking that, uh-oh, I wanna be an artist, but I gotta prove to my father that I'm a tough guy. I think that has a lot to do with uh, painting the tough guys. This painting was done to give a feeling of his movement, of, of the Black Mamba. This is a painting of Marlon Brando from Streetcar Named Desire. On the top is a takeoff on the tip top rolling papers, because I know Marlon liked to have a lot of fun and arguably liked to get high. These three paintings are, uh, these are prints uh, that I've hung up here that's uh, uh, signed and dedicated to me by the athletes. It's Joan Namath, Jerry West, and the bus. Uh, when I painted this, his wife told me she wanted specifically him running over Erlika. Second down and goal, they go to Venice again. Venice gets hit, still driving, touchdown! It was fun when I meet the athletes and, and, and they're so happy to meet me. Uh, Joe, who I've done a lot of paintings, uh, I ran into him at an event and I walked over and asked him if he remembered me and he threw his arms around me and said, are you kidding? Do I remember you? Killed me. <laughs> it was wonderful. You gotta have confidence in your team, you gotta have confidence in yourself, and if you don't have that confidence, you can't play football. We all felt we could win, we won. On the one hand, I could say, what do the athletes really know about art, although some of them do. On the other hand, 
I am flattered beyond belief when they commissioned me to do a piece or they like a piece. I remember uh, when Kobe commissioned me to do a painting of his wife and his mother-in-law. Just talking to him about it, he was so focused, so right there with, uh, I want this. I, you know, he let me, he gave me my head. He certainly appreciated that. But if he would say, no, I don't want this part, and I do like that part, I mean, he was just there, just being around that. It's terrific. The, the mixing of the water and the spray paint is like water and oil, and that causes a lot of very interesting things to happen. When you're a little kid, you're 10 years old, and you're ready to go to bed at night, you're standing up in your bed, and you're going, you know, it's Mickey Mantle. This is it. Here it goes. It's out of here. Or it's Michael Jordan. Jordan. Open. Chicago with the lead. It's Magic Johnson. Here comes Magic. He's got it. He throws it on the way for three. Down. Or it's Kobe Bryant. It's like a whole body experience at that age. You're just there, you know, you're in that body. That's what happens when I look through photos. I just go online and, you know, I'll punch in Kobe. I want to do a Kobe painting and it comes up with 675,000 hits to choose from. I look at the photos and every one I just feel it. My whole body feels. The only reason I know that I do that well is because people, that's the first thing people say, you really capture the action. And I'll be thinking, I actually never saw him play. I've only seen a photo. I used to do regular backgrounds. Uh, one day, I met a new friend, the young guy. He did Xerox art, you know, did invitations to parties and, you know, bands and different things like that. So we were drinking tequila and then we come into the studio here. The women took a hot tub. He goes over and looks through my tapes and he found that Nirvana. And so he goes and puts it on full blast and we're drinking. Then he looks at me and he says, what are you most afraid of in art? And I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> you know, I'm like a successful artist. What is he talking to me about? Before I answered, he said, just do that. The next thing I knew, we were throwing paint. We were painting ourselves. I remember painting my tongue black. My t-shirt got caught on fire. Just paints and brushes and just everything all over the place. I was sitting down and I thought, my God, it finally looks like an art studio. It was just covered old magazines rolled up, brushes, everything. As it turned out, I was, I was most afraid of not having control. And I just had this epiphany, it was a true epiphany. And I said, I just saw my paintings, my figures on that kind of background. The colors that the Lakers have are beautiful. I've been, painting Lakers since late 70s. And uh, by the late 90s, the new Staples Center had been built. And they commissioned me to do two paintings. It just took off from there. It was a continuous, you know, it was just a bunch of higher bounces and higher bounces and higher bounces. Well, I just see, like, I look at the shapes and the forms and I try and, bring them out. I see them, I see the sensuality in them, the rawness in them that I see, but the photograph doesn't quite show. I try to bring that out to the max to get that, that feeling, the darkness against the lightness, the, the light that's in there. I think there's a lot of beautiful stuff that you can, that I can dive into. Like it's a rich, dark thing that's really beautiful. And I, I try and bring that out. <laughs> 